got uh, from all the groups and we will close the discussion here and we will vote later on today. Now the next point on today's agenda is Cameroon. We've got five sponsors of this resolution and the first person to take the floor will be Mr. Tanak. The floor is yours, sir. Sorry, I haven't got my glasses on. <laughs> the response in Cameroon to a number of internal and external threats to security is one of an increasingly authoritarian nature, with rights to free speech and assembly being severely curtailed currently. The arrests in January of the opposition leader, Maurice Camto, and some 200 of his party activists in response to their protesting following the flawed presidential elections of 2018 is the latest incident of concern. Camto remains in detention following charges of insurrection, rebellion and crimes against the nation. Whilst Cameroon has been an important regional partner in the fight against terrorism, particularly Boko Haram, which has been active in the far north region of the country since 2012, there are many concerns about the misuse of anti-terrorist legislation passed in 2014. Reports regarding the extrajudicial killing of allegedly former members of the terrorist organization and the activities of vigilante groups suggest also that a growing number of innocent civilians are in danger of being targeted. Meanwhile, the government's response to the protests of its anglophone majority in the northwest and southwest regions is also of grave concern. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The floor now goes to Mr. Urban Crespo. Thank you very much, President. The armed forces in Cameroon have been accused of uh, committing violations against the human rights of the civil population. They have also been accused of arbitrarily detaining protesters who are protesting irregularities during the last elections. In the English-speaking regions, the army has fired on unarmed people from a helicopter causing tens of deaths and uh, European made arms have also been used to execute people. There are videos that show that Cameroon soldiers have killed women and children just because they have been suspected of being part of Boko Haram. Member states such as Spain are selling arms to the country in spite of the fact that it is banned under the common position of the Council going back to 2008. But that has not been mentioned in the text. The European Union and its member states are actually providing military training and logistical aid as well as arms and military equipment for Cameroon. And this is something that has been suspended by a country such as the United States because of the flagrant violations of human rights that have been committed in Cameroon. We call on the European Union to stop any military uh, advice and help and the sale of arms and equipment to Cameroon because human rights then are simply words and they are not actually actions. And we cannot stand for that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The floor now goes. Honorable High Representative, dear Chairman, even on, on this last day of a final plenary session of our mandate, we show our commitment to fight for justice on, and humane world. Today, this brings us to Cameroon. Numerous reports from human rights monitors have documented the excessive use of force by security forces and continued human rights violations against citizens. Several members of an opposition party, including its leader, Maurice Camto, and a large number of protesters and sympathizers are imprisoned. On top of that, the authorities of Cameroon have repeatedly restricted the freedom of expression by shutting down the internet and harassing and detaining journalists. These actions are fundamentally against the values and standards that we promote on the international scene. For that reason, dear colleagues, we as a European Parliament must act. We must call upon the authorities of Cameroon to immediately and unconditionally release all political opponents and any other citizens who had been detained solely for political purpose. We need to condemn the use of excessive force and violation of the freedom of expression and stress and request independent and transparent investigation into these viol violating, violating actions. Looking at our own possibilities, European Union can also make a difference. We should take advantage of the political leverage 
provided by development aid program to enhance and defense human rights in Cameroon. Additionally, European Union should also consider providing technical assistance and political support based on our experience in other conflict regions and development programs in order to assist the development of stronger democratic Cameroonian society. Dear colleagues, this motion works for a better future for the, all the Cameroon citizens and deserves all your support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The floor now goes to Ms. Sargentini. The floor is yours, madam. Thank you very much. October 2018, there were elections in Cameroon and President Paul Bia was re-elected. But he's been uh, in power since 1982. How is that possible? And it's not uh, strange um, that there should be protests in the streets. And I believe that the core of our resolution today is that the Parliament says to Paul Bia, leave Maurice Canto and his people free, release them. Democratic protest is only to be expected in a democracy. Being taken to, um, a, court tri to a, a military tribunal is not any kind of place for civilians. Um, and there are countries where uh, different languages are spoken and uh, we know about that in the European Union as well. And I believe that we don't often talk about Cameroon, but this is an opportunity for us to do just that. And uh, power is in the hands of Palbia. He can bring about change. Thank you. Thank you very much. The floor now goes to Ms. Kache. After the elections that have led to many questions in Cameroon, peaceful strikes and demonstrations escalated into violent clashes and security forces were involved in serious human rights violations. Hundreds of people have died, hundreds of thousands are displaced, and activists have been rounded up and jailed. Now, oftentimes, anti-terror laws and heavy security measures are abused to justify these crackdowns. There have been cases of torture, forced disappearances, and extrajudicial killings. The freedom of expression is not respected, whether online or offline. So this is a very, very serious escalation. We urge the security forces in Cameroon to stop the use of this disproportionate violence and to respect the human rights of all its citizens. There need to be investigations into the allegations of excessive use of force and human rights violations, and it is very important that under the leadership of the African Union, there will be peace talks that we, as the European Union, and all of our leaders need to support. Thank you. Thank you very much. For the S&D group, the floor goes to Mr. Lopez Aguilar. President, Commissioner Mogherini, High Rep, as we all know, Paul B. happens to be one of the longest time rulers of all Africa, competing with Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe, and now only to Teodoro Obiang in Equatorial Guinea. Seventh election leading to massive demonstrations against rigged elections. And Maurice Camteau, the leader of the Mouvement pour la Renaissance de Cameroun, was detained now in prison, facing charges which could lead under military courts, nothing less than life sentence or death penalty. So we urge, first of all, the stop of this violence and harassment and the bans against demonstrations. We urge credible, transparent and free election through electoral reform. We urge the European Union, along with the African Union and the United Nations, to exert a role of mediation in order to secure the release of not only Maurice Camteau, but all also 200 political party followers which were also detained. And of course, we finally urge the European Union to take measures in order to scale down the level of cooperation with a country which does not behave democratically. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Mr. Czarnecki for the ECR. Thank you very much, Chair. President, we are talking about Cameroon, which is a country a long way away from Europe.
it's a country that was once a colony form of one of the European Union member states. And therefore there is a moral obligation for us to be concerned about the country. <laughs> Furthermore, we do provide a certain amount of humanitarian aid to that country and so I think that we have the right to expect that when uh, such aid is received the, that country respects certain standards when it comes to human rights. And I think that our intervention on this matter should be a strong one, one of a unified one of solidarity and only in that way will it be heard both in Cameroon and in other African countries as well that we also deal with. And uh, I think sometimes when it comes to opposition people don't remember that they have human rights. Thank you very much, Mr. Corral. Thank you, President. And um, good morning, High Representative. Cameroon has, is facing several major challenges, Boko Haram in the north, problems um, in the east with the Central African uh, uh, Republic neighbor, uh, bo bo um, uh, border as well, and others besides, and they deserve our solidarity. It's important that we repeat loud and clear that this threat cannot be countered by disproportionate use of violence and systematic violations of human rights. In particular, we condemn strongly um, torture, forced disappearances carried out by the secret services. And it's particularly serious when the public authorities is repressing legitimate dissents and preparing for the continuation um, in power of a ruler who has been there for decades. Closure of internet, um, prosecution of elected members of uh, parliament, these are not legitimate ways of dealing with the major challenges which Cameroon certainly faces. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For the ENF group, the floor goes to Ms. Bild. Thank you very much, President. First of all, we should support the armed forces as well as the civil society in Cameroon for having resisted Boko Haram and Cameroon has worked as part of a trans-Saharan partnership as well as in a multinational force to fight Boko Haram and it has taken in thousands of Nigerian refugees who are fleeing from Islamist barbarism and for years uh, Cameroon has um, been criticized for this, whereas in actual fact it is a beacon of stability in a region which is being um, driven apart by many different forms of tension. First of all, there are tensions between uh, the English and French-speaking communities and throughout the Anglophone region there are the largest uh, reserves of hydrocarbons and the public companies uh, which control them um, are an avowed uh, aim and secondly because efforts have been made by the Cameroon government um, to promote um, bilingualism and multiculturalism and uh, they have um, offered um, English-speaking um, facilities in the Supreme Court as well as in the national education system and have trained uh, bilingual teachers. Now there is this split in uh, Cameroonian society because there are few English speakers living in French speaking uh, territories and vice versa, whereas in actual fact they uh, stand by the same values and love of the same homeland and that is the Cameroon we should support uh, without interfering in the country or being condescending towards them. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now give the floor to Ms. Kienge. Thank you very much, President. Cameroon is falling into violence. The um, regime of Mr. Pobia is um, collapsing and we have to, the way people are reacting is to trample on human rights. 
There has also been accusations of electoral fraud, and uh, he is doing everything just to stay in power. And then the um, leader of the opposition are accused of um, all sorts. So the uh, English-speaking part is in, um, un in a situation of war, Boko Haram in the north. And in this theater, there is the, um, the National Army fighting against um, militia and other forces. And we condemn the militia, but we've really got to understand what the real causes of this disaster in Cameroon are. And this is the immobilization of the uh, government, gerontocracy, poor governance, electoral flagrant electoral fraud, and all sorts of other issues. These are the problems behind. These are the issues behind the problems of the country, and we have got to try and find ways of solving the crisis uh, rather than just organising uh, elections that, where there is electoral fraud. We've got to have honest leaders there, and I would like to thank the High Representative for the work that she has done at a time where the egoism of um, member states has led to um, a rise of nationalism and populism. And I would like to thank um, my staff, all the interpreters, and others, every single one of them have helped me in some way. And I will do my best to carry on the work that I've been doing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, we wish you all the very best and thank you for your kind words. Mr. Schaffhauser next. Dear colleagues, this is my last address to the House, my last speech in Parliament. And I do this about a country which is dear to my heart, which I've traveled through extensively, and which I feel myself to be a, a son of. Com Cameroon is an ethnic, linguistic, religious mosaic, very fragile. Paul Bia perhaps went too far in the process of centralization and fueled resentment on the part of the Anglophone uh, population in the West and um, Muslim separatism in the North. But the separatism has been um, engendered and instrumentalized by foreign forces. Paul Bia has been in power for 37 years. However, dear friends, 37 years of stability uh, by comparison with other countries, it's not doing too badly, m judged by that uh, yardstick. He cannot monopolize power until his death. However, there is it's difficult to organize the succession. He knows that a process of democratic transition and decentralization, together with um, a security and development plan, is essential. We have to help him in a discreet way and in an effective way. Therefore, let us avoid any meddling and interference with uh, human rights fanfare and uh, rhetoric when we apply double standards, depending on which African country and which of our interests is directly affected. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We now move on to the catch the eye procedure. Ms. Barrier, please. It's okay or thank you very much, Chair. The debate that has taken place here has the debate today has precisely described the problems of Cameroon. What the European Commission and our representatives could do is to increase the pressure on the current president who is in power since 1984 and force the top people of the government in Cameroon to allow the, the um, opposition leader to uh, stand as a candidate, uh, not to keep imprisoning him just because he dared to stand against the current president. He should not be repressed. He should not be bullied like this. Unfortunately, that is the situation in Cameroon today. We cannot simply speak about any rule of law in Cameroon. It's here where we could carry out a lot of work, and I believe it would be a good thing, uh, Commissioner, to convince the leadership of Cameroon not to imprison their opponents for life. That would be a huge success, and I agree with everything else that has been said. Thanks. Thank you very much. Mr. Notismari, yes, please. Thank you very much, President. 
my speech today is going to be my last speech in the in this um, parliamentary term, and I hope that we'll see each other again in the next mandate. But of course, that depends very much on the Greek citizens in my case and Greek voters in my case, and I hope very much I will be returned and uh, be here when the Parliament resumes after elections. I have made uh, more than 2,500 speeches here in, hemis in this hemicycle over the time. And can I just say a word of thanks to colleagues, to the Presidency, you indeed, Mr. Presidency, and the interpreters, and all of the staff of the European Parliament, and take this opportunity to say that I will continue to fight for the legitimate interests of, the, of my Greek um, compatriots. And I believe that we must, in this case, support Cameroon, um, support democracy in this African country so that they can advance and so that the uh, citizens can find the answers to their own problems. Thank you. Thank you very much. The floor now goes to Mr. Castello, the Vice President of the Parliament. I'm sorry to say that uh, the situation in Cameroon is reaching intolerable levels and is verging on a civil war. And the head of the opposition, Boris Kanto, has been arrested for demonstrating peacefully. And uh, he was protesting uh, against the umpteenth re-election of Paul Beer in power since 1982. We're also seeing journalists and independent media being hounded. Terror is being uh, spread across the country and there has been uh, bloody clashes in the northwest of the country uh, between the forces of order and armed separatist groups. And that is why uh, the forces are turning their attention to uh, students who are demonstrating peacefully against the government. We must call on the Cameroon government to immediately release all political prisoners and initiate an inclusive, peaceful dialogue in order to find a peaceful solution to the crisis. And we need more diplomatic pressure on the country in order to safeguard human rights. And we simply cannot allow the Cotonou Agreement uh, just to um, uh, be something on paper. Stanislav Polczak. Yes, please, next speaker. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the floor, President. I would like to highlight the fact that even this last day of our plenary sittings, we are talking about human rights protection defending human rights, I believe that this is extremely important that we send out a unified vo voice. I believe that this, is, this very clearly shows that we are united in this topic. I appreciate it highly. When talking about Cameroon, obviously killing, torturing, uh, prosecution of people, killing people without uh, fair trial, uh, and so on and so on. This is unacceptable. And this has been done by the army forces representing the president who has been in power since 1982. This is unacceptable for us, this trampling upon human rights. And even though we know that Cameroon is fighting Boko Haram, obviously, but we cannot turn a blind eye, especially in this pre east Thank you very much. We finish with Catch the Eye with Mr. Kelly. Uh, Thank you, President. What we hear is happening in Cameroon is terrible news, particularly as regards human rights. And in the case of the opposition being thrown into prison w without cause, particularly Morris Canto. Therefore, it's clear that the security forces are acting against their own people. Uh, many of them have been driven from their own homes, uh, dispersed across Cameroon, as many as a half a million of them, and 30,000 others have fled to Nigeria. Therefore, it's only right that we uh, pressurize the authorities in Cameroon uh, first uh, to release Maris Kanto and his companions and then to establish democracy in the country and in particular that there would be free independent media 
without that we can't make a lot of progress thank you president thank you very much ms shodrova thank you very much colleagues this urgency very clearly outlines to the Cameroon government that the European Parliament is watching the situation there and does not agree with the excessive use of force, limiting human rights and democratic opposition there. The EU has diplomatic as well as financial tools that can be applied here and they should be applied. I do trust that the High Representative is listening to as well as hearing our reservations in this regard and she will react. Colleagues, at this point I'd uh, like to thank uh, all of you for your cooperation. For five years on the Thursdays of our plenaries we've been debating these urgencies, these human rights situations and we kept calling for the release of prisoners, we were calling for the release of those persecuted, those persecuted for their political opinions or their ethnic, um, ethnic origins. And I'd like to thank you for that. I do believe that it, was, it has been very meaningful and that is why I will defend my mandate personally and I'd like to thank all of those taking care of us here at the European Parliament. Thanks. Thank you very much. We wish you very well. Mr. Shorio, yes. Just a few weeks ago, the Vice Governor of Tibet said that the human rights situation in Tibet is not just good, but very good. All ethnic groups in the region appreciate the Communist Party's work. They listen and follow the party. Apparently, Tibetans never had it any better enjoying the fruits of fast paced economic development. Thousands of police and military patrol the streets to ensure they get all the help they need or perhaps to make sure that they do not accidentally set themselves on fire. But fortunately, it's not just the Tibetans who have it so good. The Uyghurs also enjoy all the benefits of the 21st century's most advanced artificial intelligence and digital surveillance technologies to make their lives easier and more comfortable. Arguably, they also have access to the world's most extensive lifelong learning system in dedicated education and training centers. By the same measures, we could confidentially say that the EU-China human rights dialogue is a successful instrument in promoting human rights and our values. I'm sorry I missed my speaking time due to technical problems. Thanks to listen to my previous uh, uh, China debate speech. It was my last speech after 11 years in the parliament. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Choba, I am delighted to have been able to give you that opportunity. And then finally, Ms. Mogherini. Mr. President, uh, uh, since the elections in Cameroon last October, we have witnessed uh, tensions in the country, particularly in the so-called Anglophone regions, repression of demonstrations and the narrowing of the political space. Key opposition figures uh, are under arrest. They face military trials. More than 100 protesters of, or sympathizers are facing prolonged detentions. Defense lawyers claim that Cameroon's own legal procedures are not being respected. De facto ban has been imposed on marches and protests of the opposition, which is clearly not in line with the constitutional rights of Cameroonian citizens. We have been uh, following the situation closely, constantly, uh, on behalf of all the 28 member states. We've asked for the release of detainees against whom hard evidence cannot be produced. And we've asked for uh, an immediate halt to violence, to human rights violations and hate speech. And I insist on this message today. I thank you for putting this uh, important debate on uh, the agenda on the last day of your mandate. Uh, to stress this message uh, uh, in a unified manner. Regarding the situation in the English-speaking regions of the Northwest and Southwest, we have consistently uh, called for dialogue as the only way to achieve a sustainable solution in a non-violent and inclusive manner, respecting fundamental rights and the rule of law. Regrettably, unlawful killings and atrocities continue to be reported uh, regularly allegedly involving both uh, the security and defence forces and separatist groups. The humanitarian consequences uh, of this situation are alarming, with about half a million internally displaced people and over 
thirty two zero refugees from cameroon registered in nigeria. we have raised our call for restraint and dialogue directly with the authorities of cameroon. in particular we are following closely the cases of the forty seven anglophone leaders that are in jail insisting on the need for a fair and transparent trial. these tensions add to the continuing attacks that some of you mentioned by boko haram in the far north as well as in Chad, Niger and Nigeria. We know that Boko Haram uh, is uh, um, not uh, uh, invincible, that has suffered major setbacks, yet uh, we are um, seeing uh, civilian deaths and also losses by the security forces in Cameroon. Given uh, that new refugees from Nigeria have lately arrived uh, in the far north region of Cameroon, I wish to join uh, the recent appeals from the UNHCR that the universal principle of non-refoulement has to be respected fully. These are the reasons why we need to continue our humanitarian support as part of the international humanitarian response on the different uh, and various fronts. We consider both the internally displaced people and the refugees that are coming from Nigeria and the Central African Republic. If we consider that all together, there is about one million people in need of help, and I believe we have a humanitarian duty we need to respond to. This is uh, something obviously we cannot forget when assessing our future support to the people of Cameroon. At the same time, we will continue to push for the respect of human rights in Cameroon and to ask to shed light on human rights violations fully. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Mogherini. Please stay. We have another motion to debate. We have received six motions for resolution ECR, SND, EPP, Greens, Alde, 